Hi everybody and welcome back to another episode of The Couch. Today Tim is going to be talking about um, some new Magic. firmware. Yes. Magic Lantern. Magic Lantern. Uh, available for, Canon, this is for Canon, right? Canon only. That's right. Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, uh, it's free. That's probably the main thing. 100% free. And you can download it. We'll add a little link uh, at the bottom there to uh, where you can download it from. And what you do with this thing is you... Basically, you drag all the files over to your card. It's firmware, and when you go into your card settings, your camera settings, I mean, you go to your firmware, you say update firmware, and it, and it installs all the firmware you need for Magic Lantern to run. It's pretty easy. Yeah. It's harmless. It doesn't. Um, it's not going to brick your camera brick, or whatever no. you want to call it. No, it actually runs in memory on the camera. But when you pull the card out, that kind of disables all your functions. So um, yeah, you need to have your cards. If you're going to use this in, in production, you, you want to have this stuff installed in your card. So you're, you in know, every card. Every card you, you plan need. to yeah. use, right? Yeah. Now, I learned about this because I wanted to figure out if there's some better ways to work with video on the 5D Mark II or really any of the Canon cameras that you shoot video with. Because I was kind of disappointed. We were both disappointed with uh, audio. audio. Monitoring. Yeah, audio yeah. monitoring. I mean, I don't know why Canon didn't let you monitor audio as you record it. I mean, that's right. one of the main things you want to do when you shoot the video to make sure your audio is good. Well, Magic Lantern lets you do that. It takes that AV out from your camera, which is this guy on the side. That AV becomes audio monitoring via headphones, which is really nice. And also, what you can do is tell this thing to use both an external mic as well as the internal mic on the camera. So you have, you have multiple audio sources, which is also just awesome. Basically, it, it unlocks your Canon camera for shooting video. And we should point out that this does vary a little bit between models. Yeah. Um, for models such as uh, the Rebel series, like the T3i, yeah. you, you have to purchase an actual, it's a special crossover cable from uh, mini um, USB to 35 millimeter headphone jack, which those are available. Now with the fi with the camera like the 5D, um, this one, uh, you can just plug it right in and it starts working as soon as Magic Lantern is installed. Yeah. Pretty sweet. So what I want to do today is, is run through some of those settings. Also, what I found out, the video thing was awesome, but um, as I started to play with this thing and use it, I discovered there's a lot of stuff just for standard photography you can do. A lot of settings in the menus for just, you know, all kinds of really cool stuff for photography. So I'll run through some of those things. I'll do the video stuff first, but uh, I guess let's run through this stuff. Um, on the 5D Mark II, to get into the uh, Magic Lantern menu, you push the erase, the trash can button. Which is a little bizarre. It's a little bizarre, yeah. <laughs> but um, when you hit that, your menu comes up. Now there's a bunch of stuff in here, as you can see. It's all kinds of stuff. But let's go into the video or the, sorry, the audio section first. Um, the really cool thing here is, right away you see you can adjust your uh, your audio gain, your analog gain, on the fly, which is pretty cool. All right, now I'll, down here, this is where you can set your input source. So if you have an external, let's say you have a wireless mic set up on somebody, a lavalier, and you also wanted to just as a backup use the internal mic on the camera, you can do that. Now you can change that if you want. Just internal. Then you can do left internal, right external, external. Sorry, there's a bunch of stuff in here you can do. It's really cool. And another thing that I love about this is the audio meters down here. I love that. Yeah. I could be shooting and see my meters. Again, which is something that's not available standard on right. on any of these cameras that shoot video now. Which to me is crazy. Right. Um, all right, mic power. That's your uh, if you have a shotgun mic, for example, that requires low Z power, you can do that now. Um, you have a wind filter in here, pretty cool. And um, you can turn on headphones as well. So if you want to monitor your audio with your headphones, just push that, turn that on. You get audio out of the headphones. Right. It's pretty Where cool. was that before? Yeah, just unbelievable. <laughs> So cool. All right, I'm moving over to the next menu. Um, actually, let me go back to this one. The automatic gain control. You can turn that on, and that will allow you to kind of have an automatic gain control. Just kind of keep things normalized. I turned it off, but it's there if you need it. All right, um, exposure. Actually, let me go to the overlay menu because this actually is where a lot of the stuff gets turned on or off when you're in live view. If you have global draw, global draw off, that will turn everything off. You won't see any magic lantern stuff in my view. So you want that on. So let's go into movie mode. We're talking about video. We'll go into movie mode. Um, 
the bit rate, you can change the bit rate. Now, the default the standard on the Canon cameras gives you about, I think it's 12 minutes of video. Right. Or 4 gigs. 4 gigs. And yeah. that maxes it out and stops recording. Uh, on this thing, you can change the bit rate. The lower the bit rate, the longer you can record. All right. So, if you change this, yeah, you're getting higher quality, but you're going to go lower in your uh, time you can actually record. All right. Time indicator. This tells you how much time you have or what's left on your card or what's left uh, as far as the 4G limitation. Right. Or it's off. Uh, movie logging is pretty cool. Movie logging actually lets you, um, it creates a metadata file. So one thing I've noticed about the videos these things record, there's no metadata. So you, let's say you want to know what the f-stop was, what the shutter speed was, all that stuff. That actually gets recorded. If you turn this on, this, this uh, magic lantern creates a little file that you can then go in, look at, and find out all the settings of, that, of the videos you, you shot. Pretty cool. Uh, movie, movie restart is also nice. This is where, if you do hit that 4 gig limit, it'll actually do a continuous video. The downside of this is that there's about a two or three second gap between your videos. So, okay. That's the stuff. Well, HDR video is also very cool, and we could probably talk about this in, in, in another show, mm -hmm. an entire show just on this, but HDR video, basically what this does is it takes a frame, we can look at this, one frame at a high ISO, one frame at a lower ISO, and you can change those ISOs. So you can have sort of this HDR look, which you then go back in and post-process right. after effects. On the shoot menu, now, the standard bracketing on, we're getting into the photography stuff now, the standard bracketing on a, on a Canon, at least the 5D Mark II, and probably most of the other ones, is three brackets. Right. And you could do it manually, of course, you could do your own brackets, right. but if you want to just do the audio stuff, it's three. And this one, you can go in here and say, all right, well, I want, I want seven. Okay. I want six, whatever you want. It's all in here. Up to nine. Mm -hmm. I haven't played a lot of effects, but up to nine. And then there's your stops. Okay. Right there. So you can do whatever you want here. This is the sequence it does it in. So zero would be standard exposure. Mine is, of course, underexposed, plus is overexposed, so on and so forth. So you can tell it what kind of sequence do you want to do. Okay. So you want to do regular three over, you want to do regular three under. Probably that's the most important. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, two second delay. This is what it, this is what happens where um, you choose this and it will actually not start shooting until two seconds after you push the shutter. Oh, okay. So, so in case you don't have a remote. Or, yeah. You don't have a bump or something right. like that. Uh, intro velometer, that is actually um, time lapse. Oh, okay. Yeah. So again, this kind of eliminates the need for some of these cameras won't do time lapse right out of the box. Right. So you, to get a trigger that has timers and so forth. On. Yeah, yeah. This kind of eliminates a little extra equipment. Yeah. And let's look at some of these settings in here. Um, now, this actually, you see where it says record a clip every two seconds. Mm -hmm. You can do time lapse video or time lapse photography. Oh, okay. So that depends on what mode you're in. Let me go back over here. This is um, in your exposure menu under live display. You go in there, you change that to photo with exposure simulation, or you can do that exposure simulation, either way. But that puts it into the um, photo mode okay. for things like time lapse. Right, so let's go back and take a look. I should turn this on, so... Yeah, okay. Now you're in picture mode. Okay. You saw before where it said movie mode. Right. Now you can say, all right, take a picture every whatever you want it to be. You know, it just keeps going up and up, so... And then when do you start? You start two seconds, two seconds after I push it, or you change this to four seconds, whatever you want, so you can you know, tell it. Right. Again. Start shooting when I. You know. Okay, and then stop after how many shots? You know, 5,000 shots. So it's, be, it's, up, it's up to 5,000 or disabled. So I guess if you're in bold mode or something like that. Yeah. Just, you know, do it well. That's pretty cool. All right. Uh, this bulb focus rant, this is actually for if you're doing, um, if you're doing the time lapse stuff. And you want this thing to kind of adjust your ISOs as the, as the as sun goes sun, up right. or, or goes down. This will actually tell you, okay, well, what mode should I do this? Should I do it sunrise, sunset, auto, you know. And you can tell. Here's some settings in here for, you know, what kind of adjustments should it make right. for me. So I didn't do this either, but cool stuff. Okay, also in the, focus, or in the shoot menu is this thing called LCD sensor. This actually turns your... The LCD on the back into a remote. 
Oh, okay. Very cool. So if you turn this on, and you say, all right, when my hand's near the sensor, and I pull it away, take a shot. Take you can a actually... Shot. So let's see if this actually works. Let's just take my hand, we'll put it in front of the sensor. Great picture. But look, it does actually work. Right. So if you're if you're wanting to, if you don't have a remote, and you want to use some timer, you just do this. Very cool. Very cool. So like that. Okay, motion detect. This actually will take pictures if there's motion. Okay. So if it detects any uh, change in frame, let's actually look at the settings here. You can say, all right, well. Trigger it by exposure change, so if the lights change or something. Somebody it's, walks in front yeah, of it. Yeah, it'll, it'll shoot. Or there's a frame difference. So it just does a, an analysis of the images. It's like, well, this change, I'm going to take a okay. shot. Focus menu. Um, there's a bunch of stuff in here. There's um, uh, follow focus. Okay, yeah, uh, follow focus actually lets you use, on the 5D Mark II, there's a little trigger, a little joystick on the back. This actually allows you to use this as a focus Oh, okay. So if you're in live view, let's say you're in this view. See what's going on. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm using the joystick to focus. Again, one of those things is just kind of cool. And you probably could even do some rack focus kind of uh, effects with this. Let's go into preferences. All right, this image review settings, there's some pretty cool stuff in here. Let's say you did shoot some time lapse and you want to play it back. Mm -hmm. You have like, I don't know, 300 shots. You just want to see what it looks like. You know, kind of like in a, in a sequence. Yeah, in a sequence. If you go in here, you say, all right, I want to do time lapse. But what that does is, what you would do is see where it says set plus main dial. Mm -hmm. okay, on this camera, that would be set and then main dial. So you push that and then tap that. Mm -hmm. You just turn it once and it'll actually play the images in sequence. Really okay. fast. Actually, we could probably show that. Oh, okay. So if these were, if these were time lapse images, they'd be, be all lined You'd up. see, yeah, very cool stuff. Okay, so live view. Zoom settings, increase sharp contrast. It just increases the sharpness of contrast when you're in live view, which I guess helps if you're in bright, in bright situations. Right. Yeah. yeah. Zoom on half shutter. This is where if you're um, if you're in manual focus and you want to really know if you're if you're focused really well, when you turn on zoom on half shutter, this will allow you to have an image zoomed in so you can tell if you're focused on. Oh, okay. So if I turn this on, which it is on now, I'll, I'll show you this. Let's go back out of this. So we're in live view again, and um, I go to manual focus. If I push the shutter halfway down, it zooms oh, in. Yeah, that's so right. now, yeah, so now I can go in there. Well. Yeah, I do. I use that a lot, especially for landscape portraits. Yeah. I'm going long exposures. Um, until Magic Lantern came along, you just basically did a live view, and then you could zoom in like you would zoom in if you were viewing a photo. Yeah. Um, but it was kind of a hassle. You had to zoom all the way in, and then when you actually press the shutter, it didn't take you back out. You would have to zoom all the way back out right. in the live view. Um, I mean, you know, it would still take the picture fine, but uh, that, that is a little bit nicer. You can yeah. half press, focus, and then release the shutter. So some cool stuff in there. Um, like I said before, uh, if you're gonna use this tool, I'd recommend playing with it first. Yeah, Get used so to it. there's a ton of, there. I mean, we're just scratching the surface of some yeah. of the stuff that's in here. Um, and again, it's different for every model, so if you're not using a 5D Mark II, right. the menus are going to be a little bit different. Some of the things are going to be missing. I know testing it on um, 600D, the audio settings are there and the audio meters are there. Um, but you can but, adjust on the Right, you while. can't adjust while recording. Yeah, so you have to make, II. right, on the 5D Mark II you can. Yeah. So with something like the 600D, you have to make sure that audio is correct. Um, you'll still see the levels, you just can't adjust them while you're shooting. Right. Yeah. That's the problem with that. Yeah. I would, yeah, and you know, I would bring a card that has this on it mm -hmm. for situations where you're going to use it. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? Right. So, let's say you're going to shoot some video, we'll pop that card in, it's ready to roll with, with uh, Magic Lantern. Right. You know, and if there are situations that you want to time, do time lapse or something like that, have that ready, if, you know, if ready. Right. Yeah. And these are all, and, and again, it's things, of course, everybody knows. You have to test this stuff yeah. before you go out right. to, um, you know, to a shoot and actually try to, try to use these devices. So, yeah. um, I think that pretty much wraps up yeah. our Magic Lantern for today. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We'll answer them as best we can. Yep. And uh, thanks. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching.